Hi guys, it's Peter Jennings from Professional Boat Care. Just landed in Cairns. Oh yeah. Stocking up and we're on our way up to Port Douglas. This is my crew, Greggy, putting his hat on. Ben, and the owner of the Nordhaven St. Gero, is driving the uh, hire car. We're on our way up to Port Douglas to get on board. Here they are. Hello. Yes, so this video was actually shot a year ago, so apologies, it's taken me a while to uh, get it together and get it uploaded. Yeah, so this is uh, Angus, who was looking after the boat while we were all away, and he quickly told us that there's a bird nesting in the exhaust stack, so a rescue mission was on. That's a bit nuts, isn't it? It is. I Oh, cute. Was oh, it one. just the one pop down? Yeah, one's alive. <laughs> Good deed. Yeah, so we wanted to get away at pretty much first light the next day. So we decided to go around and fuel the boat up while we were here in Port Douglas. So for all you Nordhaven fans out there that watched the uh, delivery video I did where we went from uh, Brisbane up to Port Douglas, you'll remember we towed his uh, Boston Whaler, which uh, you know gets used every day up there, all day, every day, just about on these trips. So it is worth the pain of towing it. But look, the owner decided, let's put it on a truck, send it home. It's just gonna make our return trip a lot easier. So no one was complaining about that. <laughs> As far as our uh, sort of cruise plan, we did have a southerly forecast to get us uh, in a couple of days. So we were just keeping an eye on that. So we didn't quite know how far south we'd get on this first leg. So just showing you our fuel management system here. So we're pulling fuel from the forward tank, sending it to the transfer pump. Transfer pump pushes it into this manifold and into the supply tank, which is our day tank, which is this tank actually right here. That's the gauge for it that I'm using my foot just to check the uh, sight gauge. You can see the fuel's pumping through, getting polished along the way. There's our John Deere main engine. Beautiful engine rooms on these boats. I know I always film it, but I know everyone likes looking at them. That's the John Deere wing engine. It's got its own shaft and feathering prop. They call that your get home engine in case you had a failure on the main. Anyway, conditions were lovely. And we uh, that's uh, Fitzroy Island on the left there. And this is Cape Grafton, just south of Cairns. Coming in close to Fitzroy, have a bit of a look. Beautiful conditions. So that's Ben, Ben Mann. He works for Nordhaven in Brisbane. So hunt him down if your checkbook's ready. <laughs> Detail on this when you get back? So yeah, sure. absolutely. She'll get a lot of love when we get home. Nice. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs today. <laughs> and that's Greggy. Well done, mate. Well, it's calm. You remember Greg from the other video? He's a great hand on board. This is Russell Island. Sort of uh, getting south of Cairns now. This is more sort of near Marillion Harbour. That's Marillion Harbour in there. Amazing little spot. As the uh, sun started to set, we had reassessed what we were doing. Uh, just 
looking at that weather system, we decided to push all the way through to the Whitsundays. So it was going to be a big, you know, about a 320 nautical mile non-stop slog to start the trip. But it would be a good idea because it's a nasty piece of water, particularly from Townsville down to the Whitsundays, I reckon. When you got 20, 25 on the nose, it's not good. So we were in a hurry to beat that. As the sun rose, we were already starting to get a little bit of breeze filling in, probably 15s. That's Gloucester Island there, so we weren't far from the Whitsundays. But as you can see, by the time we uh, sort of got south of Gloucester Island, we had, we had a good 20 on the nose. So the plan was to go to Hamilton Island. Uh, the owner had some friends there as well, so we were gonna catch up and have a drink with them for the night. Anyway, that long slog was well worth it. Nice to get back into the islands and avoid that big blow. Long Island? Or avoid the worst of it anyway. We still had it for another 24 hours yet. Yep, so there's Hamilton Island and the uh, that beautiful yacht club building at the entrance there. Another change in plans was the owner had to uh, fly home from here to attend a meeting, but was going to rejoin us in Roslyn Bay. So we joked that he planned that to avoid the next rough leg. <laughs> it's not the case though. So. I love coming to Hamilton Island. It's a fantastic marina. The Whitsunday Islands are just beautiful. And uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah, great, fen great fender work. Good knots. Oh, easy learn to do that too. <laughs> As you can see, my role's a bit easier when the owner's on board because he always drives, does all the mooring. I can be back to crew roll. So after a lovely evening, we woke up to quite lovely conditions, but the wind was still there and uh, we knew we had a bit of a slog down to Percy Islands was gonna be the next stop, which is about uh, 120 miles with 20 knots on the nose. So after we got the owner off to the airport, we left the harbour bound for Percy's. So when conditions are like this, I tend to weave my way in and out of the islands. That was uh, going between Keswick and St. Bees. It's a lovely calm bit of water. But once you get out from around there, you pretty well got it on the nose all the way down to the Percy's. But I tell you what, these boats are unbelievable. Like the comfort level, cruising into these conditions for the next sort of eight hours or whatever it was. Yeah, you go up and down a bit, but it is so comfortable. I can't complain. So that's us approaching uh, West Bay on Middle Percy Island there and 
anchor down in the evening and got some sleep. This is in the morning with a beautiful moon setting over there in the west. We left Middle Percy Island. We had about a 100 nautical mile run today down to Roslyn Bay Marina, which is uh, at Yapoon, which is uh, central Queensland for those of you abroad. And uh, we were going to meet the owner here later in the day and uh, he'll rejoin the, the passage south. It's Pearl Bay in there. That's one of my father's favourite anchorages. Dad did this passage from Cairns to Brisbane 43 consecutive years, heading up for the marlin fishing season each year. Towing his 32 foot game boat behind his 74 foot boat. So a lot of the knowledge I have of the coast is, you know, spending time with him going up and down the coast as well. This is coming into Roslyn Bay, very shallow entrance. We got down to a metre there. Once we uh, were all plugged in and sorted out, it was jump in the uh, marina's courtesy car. And we went downtown, topped up our provisions and uh, waited for the owner to return. Further out was another Nord Harbour, a 62, and that's the owners there. Uh, had them over for a quick drink, a bit of Nord Harbour talk, and you'll see them a bit later on when we overtake them. So conditions were improving all the time now, and uh, this was the part we had sort of planned for to have the better weather down to Brisbane. gentle little toot to uh, ask that kayaker to move to one side. Very narrow channel as I mentioned earlier, we, we're down to a metre under our keel so at mid tide. Anyway, today's plan was just to go down to uh, Pancake Creek which was about a 70 mile run. This is Cape Capricorn. Around the corner here is a lovely anchorage called Yellow Patch, you can't quite see it. And right up to the right there is the entrance to the Fitzroy River, which takes you all the way up into Rockhampton. We were steaming along at 10 knots here, very happy with our speed. Probably lose a knot when we've got the Boston Whaler on the back, so. But we couldn't outrun this ship. He was determined to come across our bow. <laughs> Brown stuff's uh, well, we call it coral spawn. I think it's it's some sort of uh, some sort of algae. Well, might be coral spawn, and there's an algae one as well. Never quite know. <laughs> it smells, I know that. Yeah, so this headland is a busted head. And that's the anchorage in there, Pancake Creek. So you can go right up around the corner, but where these boats are is where we're gonna go, which is the entrance anchorage, really. Um, just makes it easier to get out in the morning because we're only overnighting. That's the other anchorage further up around the corner. It does get a little rolly in this front bit if you've got a bit of weather out of the east northeast, particularly on the high tide, obviously, when the seas can come over the big sandbank that's there protecting. Discovered another nest. <laughs> yes. That's quite a substantial nest. Hopefully, no chickens. Chicks, not chickens. Chicken, chicks. Birds, mate, not chickens. <laughs> chicks. Yeah. That's what you call it. I want to. 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 I want to.
morning. What's dinner, Gregory? Uh, chicken curry tonight. It's a lovely morning to wake up in Pancake Creek. And today's passage was down to the inside of Fraser Island. And uh, we had to time that, obviously, for the tides to get through the shallow bits, the, the Sheridan Flats. South of uh, Pancake Creek is Round Hill Head, uh, more commonly probably known as the town of 1770. That's the creek around the back there. If you look closely there, you can see some people fishing on the rocks. And then you've got these uh, lovely homes up on the headland. And there's the Atlas, the 62 Nordhaven. They are a classic. Always been one of my favourites. So this is Urangan Harbour in uh, Harvey Bay. We just thought we'd uh, go in and grab some fuel while we were going past. We just, our calculations didn't quite give us enough buffer. Um, plus we had to wait for the tides anyway to get th down the inside of Fraser so it was just a good opportunity to go in and fuel. Yeah. Yeah. See you, Jim. So as mentioned with the uh, tides we just thought We'll go down and anchor at uh, Kingfisher Bay for the night. And uh, that'll give us a, uh, the last of the high tide. We can cross the Sheridan Flats tomorrow morning. Gotta love a bit of current. We were pretty impressed with our speed here, that bottom figure. Hang on. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Twelve knots in a Nordhaven. Almost unheard of. So this is the start of the uh, little Sheridan Flats part I was talking about. Very shallow. Um, you do need the tide to get through there. So we always go through with about an hour of flood tide left. So again, you need the tide to cross the bar. So the plan was to spend the evening here down at uh, the bottom of Fraser Island. 
woke to a lovely dawn. It's time to cross the Wide Bay Bar. And as mentioned, you know, it's all about having the right tide. So again, we just want the last of that flood tide and uh, it just makes conditions so much better. Yeah, very little sea. This is the outer edge here. I think we had about four and a half metres, five metres under us. But I can tell you with a big easterly swell and a big outgoing tide, that's a nasty bar. Anyway, we're on the home straight now. It's about 100 nautical miles from here to her home port in Brisbane. And we're just gonna steam right down straight through. That's Rainbow Beach. It's the end of your watch. <laughs> Double Island Point. And it's a very beautiful lighthouse up on top. So as we closed in on the Sunshine Coast, it's Bribey there. We entered the shipping channel into Moreton Bay. So I just wanted to say thanks again for watching. It's uh, such a nice boat, so cool to share this stuff with such a wide audience, really appreciate it. Give the video a like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks boys. And we'll see you next time, cheers.